Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some okay, fun. Okay, Nick Collier here, and we are at one of the very uh, unused corners of my uh, shop, the uh, entrance to my studio. But, uh, you know, hey, here we are. Uh, here's the job today. Well, actually, probably for this next week, this is the job. And uh, we're going to bring this down. And what we've got is this hub. And what happens is, is the, uh, and we'll pick this up, is a shaft very much like this one except uh, I think it's about eight feet long and it weighs about a hundred pounds goes into the receiver here and the receiver is set up in a square manner and then a pin goes through the receiver and through the shaft and so this rotates around this connects to the drill head the drill head goes into the ground and drills uh, what they need to drill in the earth. Now, what's happened is, uh, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, this is the metal that we're going to use. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's four inches uh, with a half inch wall. Uh, and it's not quite wide enough for these little tags here. And I'm looking at this carefully, and somebody welded these on top of this, uh, this round piece here. So uh, what we have is a piece of tubing, and for, to me it looks like a quarter inch wall. By the time we're done with this half inch wall piece, uh, it probably will be quarter inch wall. And then I had a piece of mild steel bent so that it would fit in here and fit around the drive shaft. I don't know if you can see that. Let me bring it in closer so you can. And so this will fit around the drive shaft. Now it looks like it's a little bit snug, but uh, you know, all we have to do is trim it out a bit and we'll be, be, we'll be in good shape. So that's uh, what has to happen. Um, let me get this out of the way. So I think one of the first things we're gonna do is make these little tabs. And they're uh, about two inches by two inches. And so we've come up with a piece of uh, 4140 and we're gonna section it in six sections because we need to make three of these and uh, oh earlier we cut this out and this is our plate to work from so uh, and of course I don't have a whole lot of material to hold on to so I can't really throw it in the saw and saw it but what I can do is put it in the mill and saw it uh, in the mill and and that's actually going to be a more accurate cut anyhow and a thinner cut so that's the job today is cutting the cutting these and we'll probably at the same time measure and cut our uh, our piece of tubing and maybe even we might get to uh, machining the tubing down so that it fits inside of the the hole and we can press fit it in and then as you see here, uh, welded into place. So there's the job. And uh, we're going to be at this probably about a week, I'd say. It'll be hit and miss. And uh, hey, hang in there with me. This is the fun part. All right, so we're set up with our saw. We're going to, because the blade isn't wide enough, we're going to cut half, halfway through, go around the back side and cut halfway through on the back side. So, and maybe, yeah, that's probably pretty good. Come in, 
We got one of our Gibbs blocks. Well, good morning, Nick Collier here again, and uh, today uh, we've got to, you know, I cut the tube to length, and I believe, I can't remember what the length was, 11 inches, something like that, no, 9 inches, yes, is that 9, yes, 9 inches from here to here, and what we have to do is get this plate to slide down to about halfway, and we'll take a more accurate measurement later on but for the moment uh, we're sitting at about oh I don't know a good eighth of an inch larger tube than the hole in the uh, plate and uh, so we need to trim that down now there's a couple things we have to do in the first place uh, and that is, is uh, and I'm going to take this part down That is, is that the tube, for one, I need to square up the end, and for another, uh, and I don't know if you can see it or not, so we're going to rotate you around. I, uh, this is the first opportunity I've had to use my cone, and I'm, I bought this at a, oh, it was kind of a garage sale, it was more like an estate sale, and there was a bunch of tools and a bunch of metal and I just piled everything up and got the whole pile and uh, this is the first opportunity I've had to use this although it's a one hell of a good tool and I loved it when I got it so what we want to do is bottom this up against here so I need to make a 45 degree angle in here so I don't end up cutting a groove in in my cone so we're going to put it on the lathe, we're going to true it up, and then uh, cut the end, trim the end, and cut that 45. And we literally had to take off the tracer attachment in order to get the cone to fit over the top of the uh, carriage. So, uh, uh, and, and, you know, I got a bit of a mess here. A couple of my su subscribers suggested I use a glove when I grab this stuff. Well, hell, that's a good idea. So, uh, we're going to use a glove from now on. Um, okay, so, we take our piece of steel, uh, put it in the chuck. Get it as square as we can get it for the moment. And what we want to do is uh, put an indicator on it, get it to uh, get it as square as we as we can. Uh, not too bad, actually. Uh, let's wipe this down a little bit. Okay, there's our highest point.
Okay, that popped it in within about three thousandths. Looks like three is about as good as we're going to get, which is plenty, plenty close enough. Tighten it up, check it one more time. Well, actually that brought it in closer, so we're now sitting at about two. square up that surface We got that cut. We got ourselves a seat cut. We can bring our cone in. Nice and snug. Looks good. Let's take a measurement. We're going to drop in four and a quarter inches. pretty good we'll come in just a bit shy of that so we can finish it off later and I'm thinking we should probably turn this just a little bit more Well, it's cutting great. Two things are happening. It's throwing chips everywhere. 
which is not exactly what I want. And the other thing is, is it's smoking like a chimney. So uh, what we're going to do is go back to 60 and see uh, uh, see if that's going to give us a little bit better uh, chip, a longer chip, and also um, less smoke. 520 right now and we want to go to 515 but I want a good tight uh, press fit so we got about two more thousands to take off Let's just take one and see what we come up with. sitting right at 18 so that gives us a three thousandths press now what we're going to do is we're going to measure three quarters back which is about right there Now what we want to do is we're going to just take uh, ten thousandths off of this up to this line here and that way the sleeve will, or the plate will slip on very smoothly.
again before we take everything apart. We'll go ahead and test it. Like it was built for it. All right, nice. Okay, so that has that. Everything's good there. I've already done one of these and this one, so I have one left to do, and we will do that off camera. And be back. All right, so now it's time to put uh, the plate onto the uh, tube. And uh, we're going to do that by heating the plate up. Let's see if we can get some of this wood out of the way. It'll be fine. <clears throat> and getting that hole to expand enough to we can just drop it on the tube, hopefully. If not, we're sitting on the uh, on the shop press and we'll put 20 tons on it and uh, it'll submit one way or the other. Hey Todd, can you do me a favor? Yeah. Over on the uh, welder is some gloves. Can I get you to get me a pair up there, like smaller gloves, not welding gloves? You'll see. Them. Come on. Thanks. Okay, fingers crossed. Like it was meant to go. Let that cool down and it'll seize any second. At least we hope.
All right, it grabbed. That one didn't go. We'll help it along here. Nice. All right, we'll wait for that to seize up and then we'll uh, we'll go from there. I'll be back. <laughs> 